Hi, welcome back to Sensuality. Today I'm just going to talk about fixatives. In the last video, I mainly talked about diffusion, but I did mention some blenders, some modifiers, and uh, completely forgot to mention a few more fixatives. Just a complete oversight on my part. So I thought I would take the time today just to uh, go over some fixatives. So I'll just read from a list. Some fixatives you could use include myrrh, patchouli, Labdanum, Lovage, Cedar Wood Atlas, Savet, Benzoin, Farnesol, Benzyl Cinnamon, Talu Balsam, Vetiver, Amaris, Angelica, Peru Balsam, Clary Sage, Galbanum, Styrax, Oak Moss, Oris, Sandalwood, Vanilla, Violet Leaf, Anise, Iso A Super, Castorium, Ambroxide, Ambergris, and Hedione. Now, there's just a, a, a few fixatives that you could use, but to be honest, if you uh, understand the concept of using bass notes, heart notes, and top notes, and you understand that a perfume is made up of oils which fit into these categories, and you know you smell the top notes first, they dissipate, then you smell the heart notes, they go away, and then you're left with the bass notes, then you know you're probably already going to be using fixatives, you're already gonna be using blenders, modifiers, and oils which create diffusion, you're just not gonna be aware of it. So fear not, you're already using these things. And I guess that just comes to the point which I wanna make, which is that it's not the most important thing because what you really need to do is just blend oils together and learn how to blend smells because essentially perfume is a smell, it's a cohesive smell, lots of smells blended together to make another smell. And that's really perfumery in my opinion, you need to get that down. Things like diffusion, things like fixatives, projection, tenacity, uh, these things come after you have learned how to use your materials. Um, and you know, you're not gonna be very good at making perfume if you can't blend things together. So really, lots of people are very concerned about projection and diffusion. And I perfectly understand that if you are at that point, um, and you're not just starting out on your journey. Uh, and, and basically that's, that's what I'm really, you know, made these few videos about, just mentioning some oils that you could use. Um, but it, it is an art in the way that it's creative and it's alchemy. So every perfume is different. If you go to a store and you buy perfume uh, and you spray it, you smell it, you like its long, it has a longevity, you like its projection, uh, it's tenacious, uh, it's diffusive, and then you buy another perfume and it doesn't perform the same. That's because there is no set rule. Uh, there is nothing that you can do uh, to a perfume that you can uh, you know, copy and paste to the next perfume because you're dealing with another set of oils and they are all reacting differently together. Um, and you know, remember, uh, you know, what I said in the last video, uh, everything that you do to a perfume, you add something to make it more diffusive, you add a fixative, you add a modifier, you're always changing the overall smell. So, you know, you're always compromising your overall perfume. So it's not a great idea just to go, you know, all guns blazing with diffusive oils because yeah, it might not leave your skin for days, but will it smell nice? Probably not. So just something to think about. So what is a fixative? A fixative is generally a base note. A fixative basically slows down the evaporation rate of the more volatile oils in your perfume. It, you know, fixatives give the soul to your perfume, basically, they give the third dimension. Now, uh, in terms of the third dimension aspect, I, you know, originally when I found out this information, I was watching all of the really helpful videos on the Perfumers World YouTube channel, and I would advise you to go there, uh, and they have a video, I, I, it's basically a selection of videos um, taken from one of the Perfumers World courses. You don't really get everything there because it's a course you have to pay for, and it's not online, it's, it's a course that you do um, uh, with a lot of other people in the same room. Um, but there is a lot of good information there, and that's really where I first um, learned about uh, fixatives, uh, modifiers, blenders, etc. Uh, so I would advise you to go there. Um, yeah, so that's basically what a fixative is. Like I say, you know, you're already using fixatives in your perfume. I have no doubts. Um, all of the oils that you use all fall into these categories. They're either a blender, a modifier, they are either diffusive or they are a fixative. Some can be both. Um, 
So you are already going to be using them. So, you know, just to reiterate what I said, it's more important to learn how to blend the oils together first. All of the oils that you have in your arsenal, you really need to learn how they behave, learn what goes together, make some, uh, you know, accords, do as much as you can with those oils. All of that information goes into your awareness and that will make you a better perfumer. Um, and things like diffusion, um, things like projection, tenacity, all of these things, then you can, uh, you know, start to look at the formulas that you've already made, you know, look at how they are, con how they are put together uh, and then figure out, okay, what can I do to make this more diffusive? What can I do to give this perfume a soul? How can I modify the theme of my perfume to be more like, you know, what I set out to create? Um, and, and you can really concentrate on that. And then, you know, I would suggest you do it this way. Um, but yeah, you know, if you are just looking for some information that you can write down and then, you know, a set of instructions and then you go out, you make a perfume and then it's so fantastic. You can sell it, make a lot of money. That's not how it works. That's not creativity. Creativity is basically taking the time to sit and figure out something. Um, but you're basically building an instinct, you know, you're not following a set of instructions and the thing about creativity is everybody um, you know has their own creative language everybody participates in their own unique way everybody creates something different it's really something that you have to take the time uh, to devote yourself to uh, and nobody can tell you how to do it you know really you can you know follow a few principles you can follow a guideline but it's all down to you at the end of the day it's all down to the knowledge that you build um, it's all about your ability in this case to blend oils together, to blend smells together, to make a very cohesive smell that brings you and other people pleasure. So it all comes down to motivation, really what you're in it for. Um, but I would advise you just to do it this way, to build up an instinct, um, get a feeling for it. And then, you know, you can always do it. You can, you can make perfume whenever you like that information. It will never leave you because it goes inside of you. It's in your awareness and you carry it around with you. So that's the best advice that I could give. Um, but yeah, as I said, it was an oversight. Uh, my last video, I didn't mention any fixatives. I talked about blenders. I talked about modifiers and I gave the example of a perfume where I exaggerated diffusion. Um, and yes, it was a very, very strong perfume. It was very tenacious. It had lots of projection. It was very diffusive and I couldn't even wash it off my skin. Um, but you know, it, it just smelled of cologne and it had that really strong woody note of amber max. Um, you could definitely build around it, no doubt, and make a, a more fulfilling perfume. But you know, the point of it was just to exaggerate diffusion and to show you that there's a trade off. If you just want to make something more diffusive, you want to add one of these diffusive oils, you know, there's going to be a compromise to your perfume uh, because these things do hang around a long time. They are very strong and they can completely dominate your perfume. And, you know, obviously you're trying to create balance. That's what it's all about. So, yeah, you just have to be very aware of 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 these things. But, you know, just first of all, blend materials together the materials that you own, learn how to use them, and then start applying uh, these things, then start thinking about, well, how can I make it more diffusive? How can I uh, get more projection out of it? You know, how can I make it more tenacious? Um, how can I uh, give it a soul? How can I create the third dimension? Uh, you know, just, just go in steps. And um, yet yeah, you'll learn all of these things just by doing, uh, you know, it's a practical, it's all about getting stuck in there and um, you'll learn how to make perfume, no doubt. And, you, you know, once you build that instinct, nobody, you know, you don't really need to know any more information because it's all like a progressive thing. You know, you just you go with the flow. You learn one thing. You naturally uh, want to develop uh, your perfume and further. And, you know, with each step, you have some new information available you have some new inspiration and your instinct is even stronger. So that's just what I wanted to talk about today, just a quick video. I'm gonna work on another video now where I think I'm gonna to put together another 30 oils and I'm just gonna make five or six perfumes as examples, uh, just to uh, give a little bit of inspiration. So maybe I'll include a little bit of diffusiveness, a little bit of fixation, uh, a little bit of 
blending and modifying, or perhaps I'll just focus on blending the smells together. Um, but yeah, look out for that video in the next week. Thanks for watching. Have fun making perfume. Thanks for, uh, you know, subscribing to my channel. I, I you know, went past that 1000 mark now uh, and I'm really, really appreciative. And uh, I still can't quite believe that, you know, there's a, more than a thousand people there who are paying some attention to um, the videos and, you know, who actually are interested in perfumery because there's not a lot of resources out there. So it's quite nice to see the numbers that there are so many people who actually want to make perfume. And the most powerful thing is you can do it in the comfort of your own home. You don't have to go anywhere. You uh, obviously have to spend a little bit of money, but you can do it all by yourself. Um, it's, it's just another creative endeavor. So, you know, if you want to get into perfumery, uh, you know, watch some of my videos, watch some, uh, there's lots of people on YouTube. Well, I say lots, there's enough, I guess, of people who, you know, are making perfume and who want to share some information about perfumery. And I just think that's great. Um, and really that's all I want to do as well. Uh, so yeah, in the spirit of making perfume, uh, have fun making perfume. I will go and make a perfume now and I'll be back shortly with another video.